Hello and welcome to the Punter's Guide as we look ahead to the final day of Glorious Goodwood. I'm delighted to be joined by champion tipster Paul Jacobs. Paul, what a week we've had. Yeah, it's been brilliant. I mean, the weather's been a little bit iffy, but that means that the good horses come to the fore because all good horses go on all types of ground, whether it be good to firm, soft, heavy, or just ordinary good. But the ground is drying out now, Mark, and there will be absolutely no excuses for Saturday. And it's been great to see the crowds back as well. That's been one of the highlights for me. Uh, Southern races on Saturday. We're going to concentrate on the five races live on ITV. And we start at 120, Paul, with a handicap. Yeah, it's restricted to three-year-olds, Mark, over seven furlongs. And many of these are still unexposed. We don't know how good they are. They've all been racing at the big meetings so far, like Royal Alaska, like the July meeting at Newmarket. There's plenty of pace in this race as well. And I expect two or three of these to go on. Red Mirage is the one where the pace angle. So it's going to be a well-run seven furlongs. I think ground mark is still going to be a little bit on the dead side. So you want a horse that possibly stays further than the mile. The one I really like is Quintillus. William Good, my word, what a, what a meeting he's had. He was brilliant in the sprint handicap on the Thursday. Now, the key with Quintillus is he's coming back from a mile to seven furlongs. So we need a horse that stays slightly more than seven with a pace on. He'll get it, and he's thoroughly unexposed. The ground is not a problem at all for him. Spirit of Bermuda is bound to be high here in the betting, but he's gone up in the weights. So I just have a little bit of feeling this course and distance winner wants the ground a wee bit quicker. It's competitive, as you would expect for the prize money, with Quintillis to continue the really good run of the brilliant William Buke. He's just riding at the top of his form at the moment. Yeah, and I think Quintilius will probably go off favourite around uh, about three to one. So that's interesting. Let's move on to the 155. This is the consolation race for the Stewards' Cup. And we've got the extra places. We're, we're six places each way, which you, you might need with this race, Paul. I love this race. It's brilliant. Uh, it gives you an idea possibly where the draw is going to be a plus or a minus for the big race later on in the afternoon. But it's a very good race in its own right since we had the consolation for those horses balloted out of the main race. But you do know you do need to know where the speed is going to come from initially. And I've had a look at this race. It's all over the track. High numbers, middle numbers, low numbers. So don't take this as gospel that what happens in this race is going to happen uh, in the Stewards' Cup. And, uh, first folio is obviously going to be high up in the betting. He's unexposed. He's only £8 higher than for winning. I mean, he was hugely impressive like your class to out. But there's an old friend of mine, and there are plenty of them in here, Mark, and everybody will identify with some of these seasoned campaigners, a horse called Kimmy Five. Now, this is really interesting. He was second in the main race last year off a mark of 89, and he's now £3 lower. And further to that, Goodwood, his form over six furlongs on good ground at Goodwood is 3 one zero two three. He's drawn seven. He's got loads of pace around him. Um, I wanted to go high as well. I'm going to have a Sabre with Kimmy Five on the three-year-old abduction trained by Richard Farhey, and he fits the bill. He's drawn in 20. He was poorly drawn last time out we saw him run, but he's a massive price. I think he's a double-figure price, and I think he'll run a huge race. So Kimmy Five, my, major bet, my main bet. But you know where you've got such a big field and you've got big prices and you want one on either side? I'm going to play the Sabre on abduction as well. Uh, give me five as we record this is about 16 to one but you've got yeah. six places each way as well on the uh, steward sprint handicap which is a consolation race for the stewards cup which goes off at 340 we'll talk about the 340 a little later but that's a 155 and that is the second race in the card the third race at 230 is a handicap it's called the, the summer handicap yeah mark johnson like all the sort of uh, mid-range handicaps from one mile two furlongs to one mile six, has got just the most brilliant record at Glorious Goodwood, but not this year. He's only hit the mark once. He's got Hopfeld in here, amongst others, who is sometimes a presser, sometimes a pacemaker, but there's enough, pa enough pace in this race to make this a really good test of stamina over one and three quarter miles. My Frankel is interesting. Ade, who ran over one mile two furlongs last time out at York and the John Smiths, he looks as though he's ready for a step up in trip here. And Rhythmic Intent is now looking a very, very well handicapped horse. But this is an interesting race for me because I like the bottom weight Prince Alex. Now, he's a horse that ran on a, a really good run about three or four months ago. 
change then stables. And last time I ran on good to firm ground at Newmarket, he absolutely hated it. Doesn't want any jar in the ground. His jockey allowed him to come home in his own time in that race. And consequently, Mark, he's been dropped two pounds in the rating. Now, that for me is a bonus. Even if he's running off a two pound higher, Mark, I'd fancy him here. There's going to be no sting in the ground. There's further showers forecast overnight into Saturday morning. He's got no weight on his back. And we've still yet to get to the bottom of him. So go with the weight, the, light, the lightweight here. Prince Alex, he may have changed stables, but I think he's still improving. Uh, Prince Alex, as we record this, uh, is about eight to one uh, trained by uh, Michael uh, Bell. Uh, right, the three of five, the Lily Langtree Stakes. Yeah, and this is one of the great feature events of the day. It's always produced a good filly or mare to win it. It's over one and three quarter miles, rather like the earlier handicap. And wonderful tonight's going to be a short price for you. And we know not why. She won the Hardwick Stakes. She's been very well punted, Mark, for the Arc de Triomphe. Now, if she is a real Arc de Triomphe filly, she should win this doing handspring. But she's no value at all. And where do you want to go? Do you want to have £10 on at nearly odds on? Or do you want to have £10 or £5 each way at a bigger price? I want to go with the latter. And I think Alba Flora is going to be a biggest danger. She will start second favourite in the betting. She was behind Wonderful tonight last time out. But she lost a shoe during the race. Now, She's not as talented as Wonderful tonight. I don't think you'd ever hear the Alba Flora being talked of as an Arc de Triomphe Longchamp horse. But she's on better terms here, and she loves Goodwood as well. And I think she's a better horse over one and three quarters than one and a half, whereas Wonderful tonight is the reverse. She's better over 12 furlongs because she's got a better turn of foot. Alba Flora is the value. I know it's a term a lot of people hate. But because the favourites could even turn odds on, I think Alba Flora is almost an each way better than Ovik. And these two will dominate this contest. Yeah, wonderful tonight. Impressive at Royal Ascot. Odds on, as um, Paul has just said. Like, let's talk about a big one. One of the big betting heats of the whole summer as well. It's the Stewards Cup, which goes off at 340 we are six places each way on this race as well. So the Stewards Cup, one of the big betting heats of the summer, Paul. That's a fabulous race. I mean, I've been going to Glorious Goodwood since I was 16, and the Stewards Cup is always the race I've looked forward to. It's always run a heck of a pace where it's good to firm ground or soft ground. It's going to be in between, Mark. It's going to be good ground. Now, I think here, unlike the Constellation race, I know where the pace is coming. I think the pace is coming on the near side. That means the high-drawn horses, principally through Maras, trained by Mark Johnson, who has two others in the race. Interesting that Mark has put Ryan Moore on this horse and not one of his other uh, two runners here. But that means the horses in behind are going to get a really good tow through the race through the first two or three firms. And that's the main factor of the Stewards' Cup. You need to be where the pace is to get in behind horses. And if you are a holder horse, well, of course, you need luck in running thereafter. The one I really like here is Bielsa, trained by Kevin Ryan. He's also already had a winner at the meeting. And because it's a, a northern trainer, he's not a sexy trainer. He's going to be a big price. Bielsa in his juvenile days, Mark, won his first three on the bounce. And Kevin was talking about him as being a group one horse. Last season, he had a dip in form. He had something put right physically. And all of a sudden, bang, he's bounced back again. He's tried to be stretched out over seven furlongs. He just doesn't get seven. His best six with a slight dig in the ground. He's got a turn of foot and he's well handicapped. So Bielsa is my one low at 11. But high, I said, is where the pace is going to be. And I want a big save on Eshtilab, who's had, had 12 runs, but 11 have been over seven furlongs. So he's totally unexposed over six. He's got David Egan on board. And everybody knows young David Egan, of course, won the Saudi Cup uh, this spring where he netted for himself £750,000 just for riding the horse. Well, there's the day job going out the window. But here's an unexposed horse with a really confident jockey on board, and I prefer him to the market leaders, uh, Fresh and Hurricane Iver. So once again, Mark, one on each side, Bielsa low, Estelab high, and of course with Betfred playing those six places, you cannot go wrong there. Uh, Bielsa will be popular with all the Leeds fans as well, around about 14 to 1 for Bielsa. That is the 340, the Stewards Cup. Let's just get a different view of the Stewards Cup and join ITV's Jason Weaver, who is at Glorious Goodwood. 
Well, it's the one that all the punters have been waiting for, isn't it? The cavalry charge of the Stewards' Cup. And uh, you can decide which particular part of the, the track you want to be on. They had a big draw here for the runners. And I think it's all about pace dependency. You know, I, I, I like horses that are drawn towards the centre, who normally can decide from a jockey's point of view, because they all will have been talking in that weighing room just over my right-hand shoulder as to how they're going to attack the race and which way and where the pace runners are and about not giving away that advantage in the early stages. Now a few of these, the likes of Fresh who ran close up behind Rohan in the Wokingham. He's only been given a three pound hike. He's bound to be very, very short. You've got um, Hurricane Iver who goes in here for uh, William Haggis and Tom Marquand. He was also second to significantly at Ascot and probably was on the wrong side. And when punters look at that as well, he was over on the far side of the track at Ascot, significantly up the near side. He was second. The next horse home on that far side was ninth. So that's how far superior he was in the run. But those two are going to be first and second favourite. For me, I like a horse who's been and run in this race before. He was arguably unlucky on one occasion, and on the other time he bumped into Cardem, who was an absolute rocket ship in the sprint division. It is just another bottle. Kevin Ryan has already had a winner here at the meeting. If you choose carefully, you can get the first five runners for your each way money. He's out there at around about 33, 40 to 1 at the moment. Three runs, his last three runs, he ran uh, at Pontefract behind Mondamedge. When Mondamedge was rated 79, he's now rated 90. He ran at York and he lost a front shoe and wasn't beaten miles. But you imagine running with one shoe off, nigh on impossible, especially on the front end. And last time he was banned there at the furlong marker, but it was on the all weather at Newcastle. And as yet, he has yet to place on the all weather surface. So for me, He's well handicapped, he's down on a reasonable mark. Yes, we've got the young pretenders, Hurricane Ivor and Fresh, but are very tight in the market, and they may well lift the prize. But I tell you, just another bottle is a massive price down the bottom of the weights. He's just crept in for the big one, the Stewards' Cup. Let's have a bit of him each way. Well, as Jason Weaver just said, there's extra places with most bookmakers on this race, but we're actually six places here at Betfred. So we've had a look at the five ITV races. So great fair on Saturday afternoon live on ITV. Uh, of those selections you've given us, what would you regard as your best bet this Saturday, Paul? I'll tell you what, Mark, I'm going to go for the summer handicap, the one and three quarter mile event. And it's massively competitive. But you know what? Every single race is on the card. And I love this lightweight Prince Alex. Forget about his last run on fast ground. He's got given the ground. And there's more to come. So Prince Alex and the 2.30 at Goodwood is my nap of the day. Well, thanks so much, Paul. Thanks for your time. And enjoy the final day of glorious Goodwood, everybody. It's been a fabulous week. And it's been especially great to see the crowds back. Be lucky. <laughs>